There's a study that recently released that has two sides of the health aisle disagreeing. And I ran across a comment by a prominent cardiologist that I honestly thought was a bit dismissive of the findings of this study that indicates that high fat cheese may provide some protection from dementia. And could a similar story be true for heavy cream as well? So I'd like to show you the data as always, but I'd also like to point out several glaring weaknesses in the counter arguments springing forward against the study findings and why we may wanna hold off our initial urge to dismiss this study. For example, did you know that this isn't the only study indicating a beneficial relationship between cheese and dementia? Well, we'll get into that, but let's begin with the initial study, which has made quite the stir. Essentially, the study investigates the relationship between dairy and dementia in around 27,000 people over 25 years. The conflict was over the results coming out of the comparison between high fat and low fat cheeses. So high fat being defined as anything above 20% fat. So cheeses like brie, camembert, gouda, uh, cheddar, and plenty of others. So what's the big deal with cheese? Let's start there before we touch on cream as well. Here's what's causing the friction. I'm showing you all the data in the table, but if you're a visual learner, just focus on the graph that I made based on that data. Essentially, we have high fat cheeses and low fat cheeses at varying quantities of intake on the left side. The middle 1.0 line indicates no difference in dementia risk compared to consuming the lowest amounts of cheese. If the lines and dots move to the left, that means that there's reduced risk of dementia. And if they move to the right, well, that's obviously increased risk. You probably see it now. The greatest consumption of high fat cheese, but not low fat cheese, is linked to reduced risk of dementia. That's the result. But then a bunch of people started commenting on the study, providing critique. Some of it good and some of it bad. For example, this is an associative study, but if you've been here for a hot minute, you'll know that uh, that's not a good reason to dismiss a study. And as usual, the researchers performed a series of adjustments to control for factors that could potentially explain this relationship. And yet the results that you just saw remained even after all these adjustments. So to me, if we're going to accept well-performed associative studies in favor of, I don't know, walnuts or fiber and so on, then we should be equal in our treatment here as well. I don't see anything here that jumps out at me as a glaring issue. Now that said, one excellent critique, which is always a potential problem in these kinds of studies, is something called reverse causation meaning that people could be switching to a low-fat dairy because they've been instructed to by their physician or nutritionist to switch due to poor health, even poor brain health, which would explain why there's no such beneficial relationship with low-fat dairy. And in fact, it may exclude anyone out of the high-fat cheese condition, which is developing early signs of dementia, therefore artificially indicating a positive relationship. Now on the face, that's a good argument, but we should give the authors credit because it's not like they just found the relationship and then thought to themselves, okay, job's done, nothing else here for us to think about. They foretold these dark critical times and performed further work called sensitivity analyses, like a lag analysis. And after performing these analyses to tease out the real relationship, they were still able to identify a reduced risk of dementia from eating high fat cheese. So the relationship stands after addressing many of the concerns. Now, of course, there are still limitations, as there are with all studies, and in this case, a major one is the same one for many epidemiological studies have. They measure nutrition once, only at the beginning of the study, which was 25 years ago. You can imagine that over 25 years, <laughs> people's diets may have changed, called diet drift. The researchers did try to address this by looking at the results in 2014 and assessing nutrition, and then again at 2020, the final point of the study, and the relationship between the high fat and reduced dementia risk was lost. That means that they restricted the analysis to people who had not changed their diet significantly, and the relationship vanished. But I will also mention that the relationship may have weakened but they also lost 35% of their participants, which reduces the amount of data that you'd have available to detect a relationship if there were one. Either way, 
we should be aware of the limitations as they exist. Still, I didn't want to leave it there because I've run across multiple people discussing this study, but no one has increased the scope to look at broader literature, which is where I started to lean in on some of these other studies, including a randomized controlled trial, which makes everyone drool. Okay, maybe just the science nerds. Anyway, one critique that I found ironic brought up was that Japanese people tend to have low rates of dementia, yet their cheese consumption is very low. This is weak evidence because it's known as ecological evidence. And I almost laughed out loud when I ran across this study, which was done in people from Japan. Essentially, it shows why ecological data can be so weak because the study followed people over a few years and compared those who eat cheese compared to those who don't. The finding? Well, look for yourself. We have a risk of dementia on the vertical axis. So, so to clearly read this, if the lines go down, that means that there is more dementia cases. And clearly there's a separation between the red and the blue, the non-consumers of cheese and the consumers respectively. These data tell us that Japanese older adults that consume cheese have lower rates of dementia, counterintuitively if we were to believe the weaker forms of data. Still, this is a relatively short duration study and the researchers made far fewer adjustments than our main study that we've been going over. So it's entirely possible that there's some residual confounding going on here. That means that something else may explain this divergent relationship. I'd also like to point out that the difference is quite small. Of course, this could simply be because the study only lasted a couple years as opposed to 25 years. That all said, this wasn't the only study to indicate a healthful relationship between cheese and dementia, though there are also studies that showed no relationship. That could come down to any number of different reasons, from the population study to the fact that some studies may have had more people consuming low-fat cheeses, and the list goes on. The main point that I want you to get from this is that there's either no relationship between cheese and dementia, or there's a good relationship more cheese, less risk of dementia. Now I'll be coming back to this, but before we do, let's get into this randomized control trial, an attempt to indicate a causative relationship between cheese and brain health. And in fact, before we even get to that, I'm gonna be discussing the relationship butter, milk, and meat have with dementia, as well as people with high genetic risk of Alzheimer's disease, different types of dementia, and the interaction with these foods and more. Now I'm covering all that in the extended analysis, which is included as a Physionic Insider, as you may already know. Now, I've said this before, but I'll say it again. You also get all these perks right over here. Plus, I created my own Physionic AI based on all my work that you can ask questions to. So, yeah, pretty nifty. Anyway, to become an insider and get access to all my work in written audio and video format, all ad-free, check out the link in the description. Become an insider today! We have a lone study that looks at cheese consumption and brain function. And in the study, they had one group of people that were told to consume fermented cheese for three months, and then told to stop consuming said cheese and switch to non-fermented cheese for three months. They had brain assessments taken before and after each period, and the results was... Well, not that exciting. <laughs> Essentially, the fermented cheese, which was camembert, did not provide any benefit in regard to cognitive function. But the non-fermented cheese made of mozzarella and cream cheese did provide a very slight improvement in cognitive function. So, kind of meh results. But at least we can say that in no situation did cheese lead to worsening, though there were no comparisons against non-cheese consuming groups, which would have been a nice addition. Either way, this study lightly corroborates that cheese in general may have positive effects, though some of the specifics are pretty murky. Okay, allow me to take a step back and I can literally take a step back and simplify all this before we discuss how all this is proposed to work. Now, I've been doing a lot of cheese defending. I'm out here with my sword and knight's armor defending cheese's honor as it relates to dementia. However, even in the face of all the data that we've been going over, there's a lot of darkness in areas that the light, i.e. data, doesn't shine. The current evidence indicates that cheese is, at least, not harmful to brain function. And there's some indications that it can have a mild protective relationship against brain disorders known as dementia as a class. 
Beyond that, we only have one or two studies that look at high fat cheeses specifically. So it's extremely difficult to tease out what the truth really is without more light, again, i.e. data to illuminate the way. If you're not a cheese lover, I don't see any compelling evidence here that cheese is going to be the next cure for dementia. So feel free to continue avoiding it if it's considering it's unlikely to be a major player. However, if you are a cheese lover, I'd be heartened by the data presented here. So I would keep munching away knowing that there's a decent chance that cheese, especially high fat cheeses, may be providing me with some brain benefit and simply aligns well with my already cultivated habits. And speaking of that brain benefit, how exactly is cheese providing us with that said benefit? So unfortunately, these studies aren't designed to identify mechanisms, or at least for the most part, because they're associative. That said, the one randomized controlled trial that we went over did identify some changes in a potent brain-boosting molecule called BDNF, or brain-derived neurotrophic factor. However, counterintuitively, it was raised for the fermented cheese, the cheese that did not show cognitive benefit. Generally, this BDNF is known to be involved in synaptogenesis, so it allows brain cells called neurons to create new synapses or communication points between neurons. It's possible that three months is too short to really identify a long-lasting protection against dementia, but this is a lot of speculation that's not moored in strong evidence. Alternatively, the main analysis that we've been over discusses the interaction between different molecules within high-fat cheeses specifically. For example, different fats. Yes, they contain saturated fats, but the type of saturated fats can differ, or the combination with other nutrients like vitamin K2 can also play a role. In fact, vitamin K2 is found in abundance in the brain, allowing brain cells to survive, as well as allows them to create molecules necessary to maintain the structure of the neuron, called myelin. Now, there's so much more to get into there, but it's beyond the scope of this video. The main point is that we have no real clue why the relationship between high-fat cheese and lower dementia risk is present, though we have a few ideas. All right, I did mention way at the beginning that the researchers also looked at cream and the relationship to dementia. And here again, they showed a healthful relationship, as in reduced risk of dementia with more heavy cream consumption. And again, applying the same critiques as before and combating those critiques similarly, remember the sensitivity analyses that I mentioned, the heavy cream relationship to reduce dementia remained true. Unfortunately, there are very few studies on the topic, so it's tough to corroborate these data. That being the case, an already somewhat shaky confidence gets even shakier when trying to create actionable takeaways for heavy cream consumption. I think that we need more data, even more than with the high fat cheese. But this one analysis indicates that if you're concerned about heavy cream consumption and your risk of dementia, if that's your highly specific concern, then don't be. There's no doubt that I'd be extremely interested to understand what is going on here, the mechanisms that underline this relationship. But until then, you might be interested to understand how a particular fat helps us combat dementia. Nope. It's not really in cheese or cream. I covered right here. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy your cheese, Ratatouille.